Hello, and welcome to the Sovereign Collective Podcast, where we bring you real raw truth for your self-empowerment. I'm your host, Sasha Calaboda, and I believe that you can stand on your own two feet, but that you don't have to do it alone. I love learning from people who continually strive to raise the bar, to go against mainstream thinking, and who dare to question the general consensus. People are risking ridiculed or even risk the loss of their professional status as they bravely question the common narratives and challenge the rest of us to expand our minds and to reconsider what we think we already know. Join me in learning how to take control of your health and your mind so that you can have the energy to think more clearly and the confidence to step up and take responsibility for all aspects of your life. We promise to never censor here because I believe you are strong enough to hear the real raw truth to make up your own mind. If you like what you find here at the Sovereign Collective Podcast, then please share with your friends and family. And please also consider making a small donation on my Patreon page so that I can continue to bring you amazing content so that we can all create a better future. I so appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in. And now, on to the show. Hi, y'all. This is Sasha here for two quick announcements before we get on to our interview for today. First of all, if you are looking for quality supplements, quality tonic herbs, some specialty food items, and you're in and around Calgary, then please go check out Lotus Herbal Health, a great family-run store that has two locations in Calgary. You can find them at lotusherbalhealth.ca to find out where their locations are, or you can shop online and they will pretty much deliver anywhere. So quality supplements, tonic herbs, great staff, check out lotusherbalhealth.ca. Secondly, I want to announce the relaunch of my program called Your Conscious Pregnancy and Parenting Guide, which consists of experts in their fields around the world on consciousness and parenting and education and nutrition and dentistry and homeopathy and more. This is a program I created after my son was born about 10 years ago, a little bit more than that. And I am now very concerned after the events of 2020 for our future generations. And I believe the time is now for conscious parenting and for conscious parents to rise up and take, to take back our pregnancies and our births and our parenting and the resilience of our children and of future generations. The time is now. We change the course of history by changing the course of our future generations. And we do that by consciously raising them, consciously birthing them, consciously conceiving them, feeding them good food, and taking back the responsibility of raising healthy, well-adjusted, robust people. Resilience. It's time to build resilience. So please go check out sovereigncollective.org forward slash get the guide, sovereigncollective.org forward slash get the guide, and you'll be able to check out all of the amazing material in there. And for now, at the time of this recording, it is at the ridiculous price of 47 US dollars. It will be at that price for a little while longer, but not for too long. So this is January 2021 when I'm recording this. So if you you are hearing this much later, it won't be that price anymore. But if you've heard this earlier, it is that price. And it is well well worth it. It's time for us to understand how our worldviews are formed, how our self-views are formed, and how to impact that and how that impacts the society on a whole. So check it out, sovereigncollective.org forward slash get the guide. And now on to the show. Yes, today you guys are in for a treat. I've got Dr. Tommy John in the house. And this is a guy that I came across online who actually was talking about, and I don't even think, do you, do you have kids? I do not. You don't, because you were talking about consciously raising your kids and be yeah. paying attention to how we're the, the messages that they're getting and you know like we're living through seriously traumatic times in my opinion for a child that you know the last 10 months has been a large part of their life so this can have a lasting impact so of all things I heard Dr. Tommy John online talking about this and I thought it was really interesting and ever, ever since I've been listening to different videos and interviews he's got a podcast he's got a YouTube channel if you don't love swearing, you might not <laughs> like some books, but I think they're epic. I have uh, reposted several of them. I think there's a really great place for swearing. It really gets the point across. So what I love about Dr. Tommy John is he's super real. He's not trying to make friends with you. He's just telling it like it is. But he's also got master's degrees in health and exercise science. And he's also a doctor of chiropractic. 
And he also has his performance and healing center in, I believe, San Diego. Is that right? Yes. San yes. Diego, California. Yep. So he works with people of all walks of life, it looks like from the pictures. And he's working with movement and he's working with the structural system. And he's also talking about meditation and he's talking about your thoughts and he's talking about nutrition. So it's a very holistic approach to helping you on your whole health journey. So I am super excited to talk with them. We're going to talk about all sorts of different things I know today. So hold on and let's see where this goes. So Dr. Tommy John, thank you for uh, spending some time with me today. Of course, I'm honored. Thank you for having me. Okay, my, my pleasure. <laughs> so let's talk about, first of all, we were just talking about this before. Let's just yeah. go right into like the degree thing. So you wow, got these degrees, you're a chiropractor, but you're talking about burning them. Yeah, so I, I, I've been doing this over 20 years, and I, I've always, I've moved quite a bit during my professional life, and I'm, I, I've, this year more than most has made me realize, like, I really don't know anything, you know, I, I like really, I don't know anything, and I'm okay with that, like, I'm just dumbfounded at how amazing the human body is and what my clients teach me. And so I'm looking at my degrees that are on the wall and they're on the wall and they're in these nice frames. And I'm like, what am I doing? Like I've brought those from apartment to apartment to office to office. I've started three businesses. It's like half a, half a million dollars in education crap. And I'm like, what do I use of that? You know, like truthfully, truthfully speaking, what do I use to help people and empower people to heal themselves? Because I don't heal anybody. Nobody has that power. We only have the power to regenerate, heal, facilitate within ourselves, but we can help others learn that they have that power inside. So really, <laughs> Sasha, I, I, I equated them to, to taxidermy heads. <laughs> like literally, like somebody looks and they're like, oh, what's that? Oh, it's a moose head. Oh, what'd you do to get that? Oh, I, I killed it one day, which is really, you just sit in school and pay enough money and you're going to get a degree. I mean, let's be honest, like with mm -hmm. most of these, these, you don't really need to do much. Um, yeah. So then the person's like, oh, how does that moose head help me? Oh, it doesn't, but it just shows you that I did this thing one day. <laughs> and it's like, truthfully, like, what is this? And it's like, well, legally it, but that doesn't mean that it's good. And we're starting to learn now that like the, ins the organizations that have these licensing that make you stay within their parameters aren't really like they'll say, oh, it's for patient safety. What? Really? Yeah. Or just for more manipulation and control. So I'm like, this is this is very interesting. You know what? And I was going to do a video. I still haven't because California is really, really uh, weird with fire. <laughs> Oh, great. And, I, I, yeah. you know, and rightly so, but I want to demonstrate, but I also don't want to get arrested. And um, <laughs> I'm going to burn my degrees. Now, I've talked with my friend Kelly Brogan, Dr. Kelly Brogan. I've talked with, you know, Sarah G and, and Dr. Joe Yi and some other people. And they're like, we don't, I don't use any of what I learned. I, I'm basically learning from patients and I'm learning things new every day. And I just don't, and even in the, those institutions, most of them who were good, the good professors, doctors or whatever, they were like, you're not going to use but 2% of this education. I'm like, well, why are we doing it? Well, it's mm -hmm. for your national boards or it's for, I'm like, and, and national boards for chiropractic wasn't even, none of it is chiropractic. I'm yeah. literally telling you, none of what we're being tested on, it has anything to do with chiropractic. And I, that was one thing I was very frustrated. So I'm like, you know what, I'm going to make a, a really good uh, statement here in that we put so much stock into the degree. We, we worship the degree and the credentials and the letters after the name instead of one. How does that, how do you feel when you talk to that person, especially in health? You know, I always, I always, do you feel good with them? Do you feel listened to? Do they respect your philosophy and your beliefs and your, your values? Or do they just steamroll you with purchased science and uh, bills and supplements and pills and drugs and whatever. And, and most of the time they'll be like, I just never felt good with that person or such and such was the best doctor. What does that mean? Because to me, the best doctor is the one that got you not needing them. That, that's in my, in my opinion, like the person who really does a good job 
of putting it back on you because we really shouldn't need many professionals. <laughs> it's, right. it's like the rare instance that we need just a little nudge or guidance, a little assistance. Okay, I'm good. Now I'm on my own. I got, I got this. But we don't. The best doctors are the ones that have like the, the most expensive menu or they make the most money. And I'm like, there's an old, uh, I have it ready to post. There used to be maybe 3,000 years ago in China or somewhere. Doctors only got paid when they got people well. Yeah. You know? And so if you were sick, your doctor didn't, you, you came to them with symptoms and that's cool, but they got paid to help you get out of them. Right. And it's like, it's like this uh, incentive based, you know, like a performance of an athlete, like an athlete only gets his contract or her contract if they, if they do well. <laughs> now we don't. Uh, we just and this year more than anybody like you can't get in an argument with anybody if you're not a scientist immunologist virologist or multiple you know licensed practitioner of some medical i'm like all you need is like a brain critical thinking common sense a little bit of effort and just know to stay off google to do your research and go somewhere else and you can learn just as much as do you remember in goodwill hunting did you see that i did Remember when he uh, has the 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 toe to toe with the guy in the bar, and he goes, and I just I just learned everything you you could have learned. I saved you a hundred thousand dollars that you could have learned with a dollar fifty in late charges at the public library. Right. And it, it's it's true, you know, for the most part. Like these, in, it's just the the biggest point was the the pedestal. You said it, the pedestal that we put the degree or the person who has the degree over say a mom of a vaccine injured child. Oh, yes. Do you, yes. you know what I mean? I mean, that's the biggest one, I think. Well, I, I actually the, have a, one of my earliest teaching. interviews was my, one of my earliest interviews was a mom with a vaccine injured child. And I had to have, tell her a story and it was, it's awful. Oh, and she still God. is ridiculed by people in her family yeah. and they've seen what they have done with it. What she has done with this child is, is shocking. It's like, why aren't we listening to our mothers? And it's interesting to who we listen to because I was I was listening to an, a podcast with Aubrey Marcus and Mickey Willis. Yeah. And Mickey Willis Mickey Willis is pointing out that we're taught to listen to the lawyers and the professors and the doctors, the people with the degrees, the people that. And if you teach people to do that, it's a great way to brainwash people because they go into the institutions where they learn the script and then they yep. spit it out. And because right. you know who I listen to, I listen to the farmers. Right. The people still connected with the earth. Right. Right. Not the, and, and it sounds like to me, it's a perfect format for brainwashing. And I, even yes. in some, oh, I've been getting into conversation, not lately, but in the past where just people like, listen to the experts. You, you can, yeah. you can have like, literally people say, you don't, you, you, it's good to have your opinion, but then you need to listen to the experts. I know. I know. It's, it's my shut it all off. Right. Like, that's it. No more thinking. We do. Yeah, absolutely. So that's cool. So you're going to do it. I'm going work. to do it. I got to go. The safest place to light a fire in California is going to be in the desert. So I just got to go to the desert, shoot the video, make my point, post it, get some feedback, and then that's it. <laughs> right. Right. Awesome. Well, I think that's great. Yeah. So you do your performance and your movement. And so you come from a background in professional sports. Yes. Right. Three years in professional sports. You were right. baseball and your dad. Right. Many, many years. Yeah. Um. So when you think of health, like I just feel that you really have a nice holistic approach. What are your, what are your pillars? Uh, what do you look at? Great question. So being a student, a perpetual student, um, I love uh, stories of healing. I love hearing, they're called radical remissions, which I think is hilarious because there's nothing really radical about them. It's just kind of the baseline. Like they just kind of, it's our default set. Like we're supposed to remiss and, and supposed to heal. And these miraculous, you know, reversals, they're not miracles. It's just what's supposed to happen if we, if we actually like thought that way and believed that and, and surrounded ourselves with things. So I love those, those remission stories, those healings. Um, and then I love talking to people like 90 plus years old who, who really seem put together. And I always talk to them and I'm like, hey, what's the secret? And I joke by phrasing it that way because that's like there's one thing. And they always look at you with a scrunched eyebrow like, what are you talking about secret? Like, do you know what I do? You know, and so they'll go into their day to day. It's like asking Tom Brady, what's it take to be good? You know, it's like, wait, there's like thousands of things. <laughs> what do you mean? You know? 
and it's all day, every day, you are constantly thinking about how to improve your system or how to be conscious of things. You're aware of everything all the time. And here's what I came up with. And it was a little bit of work of Joe Dispenza, the Bruce Lipton's, the Heal documentary, anybody else who you've heard, they're always going to mention these eight. And I call them the eight essentials triggered by uh, my sister's really high up in the essential oil business. And I got to that name is very, it's very tricky. I'm like essential. What's essential in my life? And I streamlined a lot of my life since moving out here. And I'm like, really, what do I need? Or what do my patients need? Or what do humans need to live, to live a really optimal life? What is the essential? Because I've simplified having been in business so, for so long, we just keep complicating, 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 and it gets worse and worse. People are getting worse and worse. I'm like, holy crap, we really need to simplify. And when the body's symptomatic or it's, or it's talking to you, it loves simple and craves it. So I was like, what is literally the essence of our performance and our healing? It's these eight. And I, I didn't invent these. I, I've gathered them from many, many, many people, observations, and then all people I've talked to. And if you write them linearly, understand that they're all wrapped up on each other, though, when you apply them. They're like quantum, right? It's just like, oh, right. like all this big morphous thing. So one, in order to heal or perform or put your body in the best position, you have to believe in something greater than yourself. There, there has to be some belief of something. And I don't care what it is. It doesn't matter if it's religion or, or whatever. It's not to be judged. It's just something inside of you there's this intelligence that is operating and, and you're communicating with and is, is a part of you. Number two, your purpose. And this is, this is key because your intention around your purpose. What is your why? And it could be small, medium, and large. I, I love those. Small for some people. Large for some people could be just getting out of bed, literally getting out of bed, making coffee or, or matcha or whatever, sipping it and going right back to bed because the last six months, they've never done that. You know what I mean? So that's a huge, huge purpose for that day. That's a celebration and we should hoist that person up on shoulders. You did it. Like, that's awesome. All right, next day, what do we got? Um, and then you got, you know, maybe purpose with something bigger than you. Again, it ties into number one. Like what's your service on earth? You know, like it's to sell as many Mercedes Benz. Okay. But then, then what are you going to do with that? Like, what do you do with that? That's bigger than you. That's your service. That, that's where I kind of put my, my purpose at. Um, but these are unique to people. Number three, getting to people. Relationships. Mm. You and I have a relationship. Um, we have relationships with everyone because we're all connected in the ether. So like how we vibe and, and energetically express are affecting global we have relationships with our family, with our spouse, with our lovers, with animals, with our patients, with our waitresses, with you have a relationship with everyone. What you want to look at, keeping the ones or trying to foster the ones that are really, really, really beneficial to your belief of greater than self and purpose. And those ones that put a mirror in front of your face mm -hmm. and they challenge you. And it's almost uncomfortable, those people. And you know who they are. <laughs> You don't know why you keep them around, but they always keep you checked. Everybody else, and I mean everybody else that doesn't benefit that, cut them loose. And I've come to terms with this because I've asked Dr. Northrup, I've asked all these other people, especially family. We have this thing that we allow family to rob us. Well, it's our family. I get it. But we have to have that boundary. We have to put up that protective mechanism because they call them energy vampires, right? Where we only have so much of ourselves to either allow people in that believe in that greater power of you, your purpose, and are going to support your journey, or they challenge you to be better. If they're sucking you dry, leave them. Because some of the, the most lost people have like the most friends. And when you come down to it, like, are they really, right. yeah. you know, like, are they really your friends? Yeah. And I think 2020 was a real uh, great cleansing of the inbox, you know? Um, number four, sleep and naps, highly underrated. <laughs> uh, with a lot of these self uh, entrepreneurs are like, you need to grind. And in order to make, you know, a business successful, you can't sleep. And I'm just like, wait, this is just so wrong. <laughs> We perform better when we sleep. That's when we charge. That's when we file memories away. That's when we download dreams. Are you kidding me? Like, 
and naps. I'm just a big advocate of naps if we can do it. Um, number five, breath, meditation, prayer. Any of those three, cycling back to that power greater than yourself and allowing. I just talked to Dr. Dawson Church on the podcast the other night, and it was really I do my meditations where I'm asking for guidance, not necessarily requesting a desire. Like, I'd really like 75,000. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like more like, um, show me what I need to do to put me in a position to be able to attract that amount of money. You, you know what I mean? Like, that's like, guide me. And when I'm open to being guided, the stuff just shows up. And it's like, oh, oh, oh. And I mean, and he'll, he's like, when you're, when you're coherent and you're leveled up, those synchronicities, one after the other, after the other, after the other. And it happened on Saturday. I was walking down the road, listening to my good buddy uh, tell me how he's making these breakthroughs, basically in what we're talking about. Girl, I just met a week ago on the beach. She's there. And I introduced her to my friend who's talking and he's all excited to talk to this girl, Carrie. And then I brought up Minnesota and Carrie's like, oh, where were you in Minnesota? Oh, I went to high school or no high school. She's like, shut up. I worked in that town. I'm like, oh, of course you did. And now we're like linked. It's just this like, yeah, that stuff just, you yeah. know, you're like doing it right when just the person riding the bike knows, <laughs> knows somebody that knows somebody. And you're going to see those times come more often. So breath, meditation, prayer. Number six, we got to get on the other side of the window. We have to get outdoors in nature. I don't care if it's cold and dark. <laughs> the body loves the elements. It loves being stimulated by fresh air. And if we can get in the sunshine or the rain or the wind or the cold, get outside, dress appropriately and get outside. We're supposed to be outside a majority of our day. Um, number seven, nourishment. Everybody goes to food, which is important, but nourishment is also what we hear, what we see. Uh, the, the natural forces from outside, what we absorb from the ground. Um, I'm a regular faster. Every changing of the season, I do dry fast. So no food, no water. And I'll walk the earth. I'll get sun. And I'm nourished like really well for those three days. From How long? Three days? Dry fast? I have never done I'll, a dry fast. I'll do 72 hours dry every wow. changing of the season. So the last one was the 21st of December. Um, yeah. And it just feels good for me. You know, it's a real great challenge. It's different every time. Um, but to be able to stare food in the face when I'm hungry and say no is a really empowering firewalk of sorts. And I, I'm always uh, amazed at where I go next. It's, it's very interesting. Um, and number eight, body movement. Just like children, if we look at a baby, the baby is the greatest result of our training selves. They had no coaches, no trainers, no, no gurus, no tech and they learned to deadlift, to squat, to plank, to crawl, <laughs> to march, to climb. They do some of the things that we, we should be able to continue to do. That was the agreement. Um, a real baseline, major baseline, common, simple, general. Move every joint the number of times a day you are years old. Oh. So wow. as we age, we move more. And that's Whoa. very non- Non, I know, I know. And that's another thing. And if a joint is giving you trouble in, in whatever way, two to 300 times for that specific joint. Wow. And wow. you can take that, you can take that to the house. That's your PT, that's your trainer, that's your, and some people are like, well, how do I know I'm moving the joint? Well, ask the baby inside. Don't worry about it. You're going to have feedback. You're going to have this belief. You've got this purpose, this intention, you're nourished, you have people support, you have all these things all synced up. And it's like, Wow, it hurts when I move like that. So guess what? Don't move like that. Or learn to move within that. Or move just short of that. Like your body's such a great guide that it will literally determine. I, my whole practice, everybody comes in, they're like, who'd you learn from? N nobody. Like me, people, experience. And then what, I, what I'll find, I'm like the non-system guy. And it upsets everyone because they want to copy my system. Well, I don't have a system. <laughs> and they they want to like write it down and be like, oh, what's step one, step two, step three? I'm like, no. And then they'll come in and they're like, well, how? Oh, you know who does that? That's the whatever system. And I'm like, oh, I, I don't know. I didn't read that. I, I don't. But it turns out like all these just really innate, intuitive ways are what people niche into systems anyway. It's what everyone's writing about. So here's the deal. With those eight, there's like 10 subcategories and we're not going to get into it. It's stuff like 
like uh, accountability, mm. uh, spirit of a 12 year old. I'm really tapping into living like a 12 year old with some adult, adult, you know, focus and, and responsibility, but I'll lay on the ground with a cat. I'll, I'll play with something. I'll play a game all of a sudden. I, I'm like, literally, that's what people will reach out to me. And they're like, you literally live like a 12 year old. I'm like, you want to know why <laughs> you want to know why I do that? Why? Because when I'm walking and I know this has happened to you, when I'm walking down a street or I'm outside and there's certain visuals and smells and something triggers a memory, my best feeling internally comes at that 12 year old age range. It was the memories I had when I lived in North Jersey. And I don't have any idea. I've had memories of California. I've had memories in Indiana, Minnesota, South Carolina, North Carolina, Florida. Nothing compares to when I was 12. And I've asked other men who have done hypnosis and some other things. And they're like, yeah, I got thrust back to when I was fishing with my dad and da, da, da. And I was like, how old were you? They were like, it was the greatest moment of my life. How old were you? 12. And I've asked women women's best memories have come at later ages. And I don't know if it's discovering body or coming into self or some of those other things, but some of the women are like, oh, my best was 14. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I, I don't have any idea, but I just, there's something with this 12 year mark for, for males. Um, but that's just like my, where I apply. So I apply the 12 year old, the intention, the re- accountability, the responsibility, the um, the finite energy rule, meaning we only have so much energy to put towards something, right? So today might be one of those days where it's like, you know what? Today's a big nourishment day. I'm really going to work on my nourishment because you can't work on all of them every day at 100%. It's, it's right. just not possible. And we're all, we can't sustain that. You'll fail. You'll feel guilty. You'll say this sucks. It doesn't work. <laughs> and then you'll move on and, and go to some other system. And it's no, it always works. This is just how we're designed. So there's all these little subcategories, but if you take an inventory of those eight and you don't have to be a a degreed guru, you don't have to be a doctor, you don't have to be a scientist. You can look into each of those eight. What do they mean to you? Write down what they mean to you, not to be judged. And you know the relationships that are good for you and you know the ones that are not i mean you truly know you might not be wanting to admit it but you do know and you know what foods are better for you specifically for you not a diet but for you and you know what time you go to bed is the best for you and so we have to be really open vulnerable authentic and have some integrity with this and just lay it down where could you improve and write specifically and i mean specific And there's you go. There's your map. And so everybody's like, well, how long do I do this for? Till you're dead. (laughs) (laughs) Like this will never stop. And everyone asks me, do you do this? Yes. I'm not a big writer, but I'm always, always looking into those eight within my day. Like, Ooh, oh me, my little cat outside. He's not my cat. I'm an uncle. I'm a great uncle, but it's like, Oh, he stops me and he meows. And I'm like, Oh, but I'm in a hurry. Wait, a hurry. A 12 year old would never be in a hurry. So I'm like, wait, you're right, Omi. <laughs> Hold on, dude. I got you. And I'll get down on the ground. I'll take off all my stuff and I'll pet him and I'll listen to his purr. And I slow this down and I'll get to my office like seven minutes later than I would have if I, do you know what I mean? But that's like how I've shaped my day. And my, and this is just con with over and over and over. And when I make my meals, I'm in love with the ingredients. I make them from scratch. I really connect with the food. And then my food helps prepare like that spirit inside me to do its job. And my purpose, it fuels my purpose and it builds my body so that I can go facilitate my purpose. And the people that support me understand and maybe they break bread with me. And then that's gonna help me get the right sleep that I need. It's gonna nourish me to do the right movements that I have to again, put my body in a resilient state so that I can handle the traumas that are coming from outside in, whether it's death in the family, new world order, (laughs) <laughs> or, or whatever the thing is going to be. And they all just link together. And you start to see how it all, it's not this check the box manner of health. Cause everyone's like, Oh, I'm going to be like TJ. TJ post exactly what you eat every day. No, it won't work for you. No. No. <laughs> that only works for me. 
you have to find what works for you. So we, I have many people have come in, they check the box and then they're like, why am I not healed? Why am I not amazing? Why am I not happy? It doesn't, it's not a check the box world. It's this molding, swirling, ever changing every minute of every day of every week of every month of every year, you're a different person. And you have to take that inventory differently all the time. And only you will know what's good for you. That's why you, you maybe saw my, the video I made yesterday. Where I used the oh, no, word I'm mother. Gonna, I missed that one. No. I used a swear and I used a swear a lot and I'm not going to use the swear on the show, but what I did was. Oh, I'm yes, gonna... I did. Okay. And that's swear, right? Yes. The oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, <laughs> and that was, I was like, you know what? And I gave people warning because I was really feeling it because the whole labels, right? And it's like, you know, what religion are you? I'm all of them, mother effer. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, what, you know, what do you do for a living? My passion, mother effer. And where'd you go to school? Life. And who'd you learn from? People and my feelings. And what do you eat? Food. When do you eat it? When I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah. When do you sleep? When I'm t- tired like it was all this stuff and then at the end what political party are you none of them what you know all this stuff where where do you live earth who are you human like done that was it and that was my big thing was we get so caught up in labeling people what's wrong with them what do they believe who they vote for what's the color of their skin how much money do they make where do they live all these divides to divide and conquer the human i'm like wait we are so similar and as soon as we realize that we're all connected in this one big web in the ether and that you and i doing the work for each other and healing each other is actually our greater purpose to help heal the globe because kelly brogan put it she's like you owe it to humanity to heal Because when you heal, you ascend. And when you ascend, you change everything. And that really stuck out to me when we when we look at things that way, you know, everyone's wondering what they could do, what protests could I do? Or what could I donate to you? The greatest protest right now is living the most connected, healthy version of yourself you could possibly imagine. That's it. And if 1% of us shift, according to the research, maybe 3%, if one to 3% of us can can ascend, and 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 raise up and, and and elevate the whole globe changes and that's that's what i what i look at as far as like what's the new earth and where are we headed and i think we're we're it's possible you know so possible we just need enough people to put that effort in because what you're saying like that accountability that responsibility right now tell you when i'm the one in the store without a mask on and everybody yeah. else even in the health food store Mm-hmm. they've put that accountability outside of themselves right and then they're just not willing to they're not willing to do the work no or even to think about they it's just the thought it's just it's crazy and you've you've talked about the men and i and that's one yeah. thing that i'm getting pissed off because i have to tell you the least sexy thing that i can see is a man walking down the street by himself with a mask on or a man with his kid and they're both masked walking outside and it's like what the hell? Where are where is that 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 desire and that protector and to protect the family and to stand up and where did that go? You know, I mean, it's like the culture. When you talk to to Dr. Northrop and you talk to Lori Ladd and you talk to all these people, it's like masculinity the emasculating of men and then the the role of women and what society has kind of done. And it's just like, my God, that's, that's what we're seeing now is there's no, there's no courage. There's no strength. There's no resiliency. It's, it's almost like women were supposed to do what men could and men are supposed to respect women. And it's this whole, it's like, wait, 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 it's this, it's, it's both are amazing. Like, like both have their place. And they're amazing beings together. And that's what's, it's like one's better than the other. One's supposed to without, no, wait. And a friend of mine put it this way and I'll, I'll never forget it. It actually makes sense. And I utilize this uh, and, it, and it showed up when I interviewed Dr. Reiner Fulmich, who's the lawyer, the yeah. German lawyer trying, yeah. And he, mm-hmm. his idea to do that was his wife's. And I made him admit it on my podcast. And I was like, so this was your wife's idea. He's like, yeah. So here's the thing, here's the thing. <laughs> Women point because you guys are divine, you're connected, your intuition is sick. You point in the direction, 
the men lead front shield not sword let's go and then the women follow but the women know where to go why and that that feels right and then the guys are supposed to step up and there's this like nice little but there's not that it's this i didn't i'm not i'm not done working on myself so i felt really weird calling out men with that video like where my boys had but i got i go who claimed to be an expert i'm not a really like but there were a lot of women reaching out and they're like thank you so much for being a conscious what and i'm like what do you mean like I, I i'm just being me i don't get what you're talking about and they're like no you don't understand like I'm like, oh, I understand what I'm observing. Is this really a like uh, something that I could speak from, from my, like, do you think I'm justified? Like I, I'm, because it feels weird, right? Like it just totally, feels weird. You can speak to that. Absolutely. Okay. Like, oh yeah. Absolutely. And that, that's where, and I got like four yeses from pre, some people that are pretty high up. I'm like, okay, screw it. I'm just going to do a video and go hard. <laughs> and, and it was literally, I saw more men, again, cowering down, obeying. And the only bravery they would ever show was with their keyboards when they go back and forth with me with data and science, but they would never stand toe to toe to have a conversation or they never stick up for their wife who knows that maybe the vaccine might not be a good idea, who knows that these masks just don't make sense, who knows that the rules at the school don't, they just don't make sense. And they're like, no, honey, you're crazy. Stop. The data shows, the doctor showed the guys listen to this. Like, we need that protection state. We need, and I said, earn your beards, balls, and tattoos, right? That was uh -huh. like my, my quote, because there's a lot of beards out there. There's a lot of tattoos and a lot of bench pressing and a lot of stuff. And these guys are just puffs. Uh, I mean, like no courage, no chivalry, no guts, no grit, no resiliency, no, like, let's, let's go. And I, that's what I think is happening this year as well, is that rise of almost the divine feminine in women and men as well. And then that masculinity making its way back. Like there's a toughness coming back because I saw it in my practice. Men are not tough. They've lost it. And I'm like, you really don't, you have no tenacity, just nothing, nothing. And the women, the women, because in my office, there's some stuff that's really tough and the females get it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, this is interesting okay, this, this needs to improve. And so I saw it from my office and I saw it around me and I saw it amongst, uh, a, you know, acquaintances and I'm just, that, that needed to happen. I actually have a live tomorrow with Dr. Northrop. Oh, nice. Um, she's starting it off. Tune into that? Well, there's, not that this will be out by then, but I want to tune into it. Where, where there's is three. It? So it's on my Instagram at 4 30 PM, uh, Pacific standard time. Okay. Um, and it's Dr. Saida Desolets, Desolet um and daniela garcia but dr northrop's going to start us off dr uh uh saida and then daniela and they're all talking about awakening the divine feminine and the masculine within and they're all going to bring on their own topics of of interest sensuality uh you know because dating's taken a back seat right like everyone just kind of orders up um a date to their door. There's no talking. Everything's virtual. There's no getting to know people. There's no, I pulled out, um, I was at a, uh, four friends. We were at the village in San Diego, a restaurant that has stayed open from the beginning. Oh, okay. Um, it was great. And, uh, I highly support them. And there were four women at the table. I think I pulled out a chair or I, I said, it was like, I, Oh no, no, I, I, uh, it was Danielle Page, and she's got a thing on Instagram. And I told her, I'm like, yeah, when you guys get there, we joked on the podcast we did that I, I still pull out chairs. I don't, I don't go on dates too much, but I still pull out chairs. And we sat at the table, and she had sat early, and she's like, yo, you didn't pull out my chair. I'm like, oh, you got there first. All right, cool. Well, then just <laughs> out, of, out of just instinct, like I got up. I was leaving way before them, and I got up, and I went and took care of the check. You know what I mean? And it wasn't – that's not – but when I left, they were just like, you know, texting, like, what the hell? And I was like, well, yeah, like, I, I would pay for friends, you know, like girls that I went out, not that we were dating, but it was just like, it's just something that's missing is that those little things, you know, standing up when they leave the table, looking them when they're talking to you, listening to them, not telling them what, how they can fix stuff, but just listening to them. How do they feel? How do you feel? Pulling out their chair. Um, 
taking care of the bill, you, you know, uh, I, I sticking out your hand to go over a puddle or a, uh, mm. I was going crossing rocks and I put one on my back. Like this was a long time ago and I was dating and she like it flipped her lid, opened the car door, like stuff like that, that I think I, I'm as old school as they get, maybe old soul. My parents didn't teach me this. So it's not like, oh, your parents taught you this. I just remember watching movies like Casablanca and the classics, right? Yeah. And that, sh that stuff was done. <laughs> and there was just a, a respect and a, a, almost like a romantic way to live life. Like I'm almost like in love with life so much. Why would you not do that to a, to a woman who has so much wired into her that she's connected to stuff you'll never you'll never get <laughs> and it's like you'll they have access so like start to respect and honor and, and then in that comes that in return you know and that was my big that was my big thing um it's it's trying to bring that back where i even said in a podcast uh i say all the time when we train and we rehab and we do stuff physically you got to remember when it gets tough focus on what you love and a lot of people think that love is soft and, and in my office, they'll see me train or they'll see me do something. And they're like, oh, that was out of love. Yes. Well, TJ, what do you love? Because the thing I love most, I don't have a wife or child. The thing I love most are all the different sensations that I get to experience through a day, whether it's a cup of coffee, hearing the purr of a cat, feeling the mist of the ocean in the morning, sand on my feet, sun through my eyelids, um, uh, a good rest on a bed, a hot shower, the cold ocean, food, like all these experiences, a child laughing, a family, like, like, in, like talking and listening and loving and the sunset and the stars and the moon. And there's just so many things that I love that I want to do for myself to protect. And that's where it comes is love's not soft. What will you do for the things you love? Mm -hmm. And you'll do some pretty gnarly stuff, yeah. right? And so that's that's the emotions we're trying to tap into. And your performance is better. Your outward expression of your body is way better when you focus on the emotion of love. But everybody thinks it's a soft thing. No, <laughs> like you'll almost be high all the time. Think about when you're in love. And I know we all have had crushes and we thought we were in love or whatever. You felt like you could jump a building. Yeah. Like you literally feel like you can elevate and everyone's like, yeah, but when I listen to that music and I rage, I feel like I could punch through a wall. Okay. Of the two, I like the jumping over the building. <laughs> I mean, like, let's just think about that, you know? Like, of the two, your body responds so well. And this is kind of old. I mean, everyone's saying this, love and fear, love and fear. But I don't think they realize exactly, like, when you do love something so much, and that's why I love my life so much that if, I share it with everyone. And, and it's like, I'm not alone. I'm not lonely. I'm by myself. But then I'll have a conversation over at sunset or um, a conversation in my office or a conversation with the checkout girl at the grocery store. Or, and it's just, I'm exuding this. And people will literally say, like, are you, do you do drugs? <laughs> like, no, not that I know of. Like, I used to binge drink like a champ, and it was like my worst memories. Like, I always thought it was like amazing. I went to the greatest concert. Oh, what was the set list? I have no idea. I was so screwed up. Like, I was so drunk. And it's like, that's so, just dumb. Right. And now I'm like amplifying these receptors from being in such love with these simplicities that we get to experience in life that do you know how lucky we are? A patient literally said the other day, getting old sucks. And I'm like, actually, I think getting old is an amazing thing. Like for you to feel, for you to have the scars on your body and the wrinkles and this, the hair and the, that, that's unreal. You've got 71 years of life, bro. Go through those stories and you're still going. And he's like, no, you're right. And I mean, I was literally like over him at the table. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> you, you know what we get to experience? But that, that, that framing of it, oh, getting old sucks. This all, I'm like, that's got to stop. That narrative has to stop. But anyway, that's, that's it is, and it's, and it's tough. I mean, we're, we're basically genociding our elders who will have the yes. connection to the past and to all those stories and all that wisdom, you know, women have bought into that. They're not allowed to get old. So they have to freeze their face and puff up their lips. And, you know, some of the men are buying into that. And it's, 
we've lost that. And we've lost that wonderment. It's like you're seeing the world through wonderment, that eyes of the child. And you know, you just, everything's just so vivid and alive. And, and with what we're focusing on, it's, yeah, it's crazy. And no fears, right? That's another thing with children. They're fearless. Like right. they, they think it, they can do anything and they can. <laughs> like, that's what I'm saying. Like that childlike what did I hear? I heard from somebody, we only are born with two fears out of innate protection. Do you have any idea what they are? Separation from your parent or caregiver. That's maybe actually a good one. one. I don't know that maybe that's a third one. So I heard from somebody, so I'm not claiming this. Okay. That, that wasn't one of them. But, okay. but. <laughs> so it's falling. Like if you take a baby and you drop them, oh, it's the, okay. they'll, they'll, they are afraid. And then loud noises. Oh, okay. So falling and loud noises are like true innate fears. And I, whether that's, there, there's others, but like everything else is learned. So like kids don't know a spider is, is possibly, they'll go right at it. You, you know what I mean? Or they'll go at, and it's like, okay, some of it is, is to guide them and protect them. But then some of it can be overpowering where you're, 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 you're dwarfing their expansion of what exactly you just talked about because you look at kids and they'll stare at something as possibility of how can I challenge myself to get over that and you can't stop them like they're going to do that because they feel that they can do anything and that is what we got to get back to in my mm -hmm. opinion is that childlike wonder that anything is possible mm -hmm. yeah Absolutely. You know, right now, I don't think that's what kids are being urged to do. They're showing that things aren't possible, that they're dangerous, that they could be the cause of like Reiner Fromage. What I think one of the things that pushed him into doing that is the document he saw on how to basically brainwash children and how dangerous they are or how they could potentially kill their grandparents. And it's sick. So that's for me, that's why I re reissued my program, Your Conscious Pregnancy and Parenting Guide, because we got to take that parenting. We've got to take the parenting away from the state yes. and we got to realize what works wasn't because that that trauma is going to be with them forever and I yeah it's, uh, it's awful i i just yeah i, I worry for the future generations at this I know. point we, I know. so you had said something you had said 2020 was your best year in an interview i think i was listening to you with ted coombs awesome guy from vaccine oh, Twitter, Canada. amazing amazing well, i want to see if i can get him he's just really great that was a really great interview awesome. he's amazing and he's always willing to help. Like he, he is done in to get out there and get going. And you, you, he's so passionate and so loving and just yeah. such a great voice, yeah. you know? Yeah. What a story he has. So you said to him, 2020 is your best year. Yeah. So what does that mean? Because a lot of people don't feel that way. I know. I know. And I, so here, here's where that birthed from. Um, I was in my office and a 15 year old kid who doesn't really ever say profound stuff. Uh, he's starting to expand a little bit and starting to get into himself. They, none of them have passion. None of these kids have passion. They don't know what they like because they're not allowed. They're supposed to do this, 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 to go to this school, to do this, to do that. Everything's just like, oh, and I'm going to learn coding and I'm going to do coding because you're supposed to make money and you're supposed to own a house and you're yeah. supposed to fall in love and then have a kid. And then you're supposed, I'm like, holy shit. What do you love? Do you love anything? Yeah. They don't, they don't have any idea. And I'm like, oh my God. So you can't be in the vicinity of me and not go down this road in some way. Like, we're going to talk about stuff you love. I like, love I, I want to hear you um, get emotional about stuff. So this kid goes out of nowhere. And I've had him for a couple of years. He goes out of nowhere. What's the greatest year of your life? And without even thinking, I was like, this year. And this was like maybe in October or November. And then I, th and he goes, wow, that, that says a lot. And I was like, it actually does. And I like thought about it. So after that day, I, I, I walk. And when I walk, I get creative and my brain goes, Wah! and that's when I get my best ideas. I'll go on these long ass walks and I'm just like cranking. And I was like, I got to make a, I got to make a video because why did I say that? And I started to take an inventory of this year. And here's some things about this year that have been just profoundly improved that wouldn't have happened had had this the events that we've been exposed to had I not take action in the face of what this has triggered because we all had a huge trauma and we saw some things get shown our weaknesses got shown and that's cool 
Like I love when weakness, I love when I get injured. Why? Because it showed me an area that I can improve on. And if I do it right, I'll be better than I was before the injury. <gasps> oh my God, what a great concept. So you mean we evolve through the more times we get injured and the more times we, if we do it right, if we listen and feel. So, okay, all this stuff came up. My purpose, my purpose greater than me. Having a busy office, making income, paying bills, buying stuff, taking a trip to Big Sur. Really, that's my purpose. No, like the bigger than me stuff. Oh, you're helping people in San Diego. It's not enough. So we started a nonprofit with Alex Zek, Ali Zek, uh, Dr. Sarah Karn, Seth Gerlach, Ben Tapper, Dr. Joe Yi. Like we're doing something bigger than us because this is a hill we'll die on. What's the Health. nonprofit for? What is it? Uh, so it's Health Freedom for Humanity. Right. And it was a way to, to like, it's not right-leaning, it's not left-leaning, it's not vaccines, it's not, it's not petitions, it's everything. It's every walk of life and every angle that this whole thing is being threatened because every ounce of humanity is being threatened, not just vaccines, not just your medical freedoms. Every part of you, what makes you human is under attack right now. And so we brought in all these people. We're going to do master classes. We have podcasts. We had Del Bigtree on the podcast. We're going to release. We got Cowan, Northrop, Ladd, Pilevsky. Um, we're going to have L. McPherson, Rodney Lavoy, Major League Base. Like I'm talking everybody we're bringing in this ragtag group of people we're re-guiding our efforts of being thrust forward in these movements because people are are grabbing on to what our message is you know and so we're going to use it not only to just sign petitions not only to learn what's in a vaccine but learning how there's going to be a master class on how to get off your smartphone What's the order of getting off your smartphone? How you do that? that? Kelly's job, Kelly Brogan. Kelly she Brogan. Off her, her phone, totally, right? totally. Yeah. So we may have her as the masterclass uh, teacher. You know what I mean? Um, finance, law, spirituality, education. Brittany Vallis started her own school uh, through ICANN. She's the director of ICANN, Del Big Tree's Informed mm -hmm. Consent Action Network. Started yeah. her own school four years ago. The businesses that are all non-masking, they all refer to each other. They built their own network and then people barter to pay for the education. They barter services like to repair the roof of the school or it's this community that doesn't need government. <laughs> they, they just don't need it. And they don't have to ask permission. It's this fantastic little pod that everyone's creating. So again, how do we create our own school, Brittany? Well, here's what we do. There's a masterclass for that. And now all of a sudden we put on events and we do stuff. It's to basically bring in the new earth or show how you can thrive underneath whatever the great reset is coming, whatever the new world order is coming. There's still options. There's still ways that if we don't stop it, there's ways to live within it. And that's what everyone like Peggy Hall, I'm not leaving California. She's going to figure out how to exist here and how to thrive here. She's like, bullshit. I'm not leaving this state because they're forcing us out. Not happening. What is that about? Everybody's leaving California. The taxes are going crazy, right? Like what, what that's is that about? Thing. Like, that's the thing, right? They're running them out of New York. Uh, uh, Elizabeth Glass, who ran for state Senate, she's like, I could throw 10 dimes in New York City. Nine will hit moving trucks. Well, wow. now they go out. Who's buying up the property? Whoever you think is behind all this. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, so let's not move. Let's stand our ground. Let's do this. And so there's, there's that, how do I exist? Jim Lloyd is a, a, an attorney trying 17 small business cases in LA who are wrongfully shut down for these illegal, they're not laws, they're mm -hmm. mandates, right? So these illegal mandates, he's going to do it. He's going to then get on. Like, what do we legally do? Rocco Galati has filled out paperwork for $90. People got pissed that they had to pay for it, but hello. He filled it out that here's the paperwork for you to fill out if they close your business, if they ask you to wear a mask or demand that you wear a mask, he has it all filled out. I so didn't know just, that, I'll have to check that out. Dude, check it out. So Rocco Galati. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then the 369 Media Girls. I'm connected, we're, I'm I'm on their thing. Yeah, outstanding. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're about to do a, a fundraiser with them. So our Health Freedom for Humanity is gonna be in with them. And they, these two women, they're, they're just like, dying. again, this is why 2020 was one of my best years. Why? Not only did I start a nonprofit to, it just my, my purpose elevated and my service 
is more like I get goosebumps because I'm like, oh, this is fantastic. This is why I went through everything I went through to bring me to this point right here to be this new, new role that I took. I was just this yo-yo Cairo, who is this health professional in San Diego, who now all of a sudden people are following my conscious way of living. And they're like, my God, I love how you just say it, how it is. Can you show us how to do a three day fast? Amazing. Really? That's the only training you do. Oh, why do you elevate your legs? What's the coffee enema for? How do you cook your food? What's the farm you order from? This, this whole thing of, of us being in these positions to help empower, facilitate, and ignite that you are sovereign, you are free, and you have these rights, and you have this power within you. That's my purpose. I have friends all of a sudden. Nobody got me before. I was a weirdo, right? <laughs> And now all of a sudden, I literally am talking to Kelly Brogan. She's a friend. Sayer's a friend. Joe Yee's a friend. Andrew Kaufman, like Tom Cowan. I'm in an email. Like all my this favorites. Is, all these are guys. just this is bananas, right? Like I'm like I I have your books, and I've I've learned from what we're doing. Now all of a sudden, we're all in the same kitchen, and we're talking about aliens and guns and and chickens and like this is. This it. is blowing me away that now I have friends all of a sudden and I was very selectively social. So again, my life has enhanced. I've purged certain things in, uh, in my life that weren't servicing me. Certain relationships have gone away. I've lost relationships on social media, all this other stuff. And it hurt. It hurt in the beginning, but I gained all the right ones. Yeah. And so I've literally elevated my life in such a way. I'm not not acknowledging that there was some pretty amazing grotesque stuff that happened this year, but we only grow when there's resistance, when there's stimulus, when there's trauma, it's like, you know, they always say like the caterpillar and the light, like that whole thing. Like, yeah, it's not a comfortable process, but we've always been groomed for the last 20 or 30 years to think that we can elevate in life comfortably or we can be in love comfortably, or we can be wealthy, whatever that means, comfortably. Like, wait, what are you talking about? Growth is uncomfortable as it gets. That's why you're nourished, rested, believe in something, have this support group behind you and all this other stuff, because this can be tough. 2020 was a beast, but because of it, I've grown. The second greatest year of my life, 2010, was when my brother died. He's on my arm. Oh, wow. Why is that? My, my best friend died uh, battling in the psychiatric Western medical world of that bullshit, right? And so I got to go through that and I lost my best friend. It sucked. But through that, me taking action and seeing what am I learning from this? My perspective, my values, everything totally took a right turn. And I was like, nope, this is important. <sighs> my life elevated second greatest year of my life are, are two of the most traumatic events. That's kind of how we're designed. Right. The body is designed to grow through that, through that stimuli. And it has to be a stimulus greater than what caused the damage in the first place. So if you think about healing and think about emotional healing, a divorce maybe, or um, you know, a death in the family or a job loss or something really, really scary. In order to heal and elevate above that stimulus level, we have to get a stimulus in greater than that. Greater than the trauma of my brother dying? Yes. Oh my God. Was the stimulus going in that was greater than the trauma of your brother dying? It would be like allowing the feelings to come in. So, so not shutting them off. I'm not going to take drugs. I'm not going to hide them. I'm not going to be ashamed of them. I'm not going to be like, oh, sorry, I'm talking about my brother again. <laughs> like, no. Um, and I'm not going to like uh, stifle the tear, like bottom out, cry, challenge, look yourself in the mirror, bring up your, your flaws that may be some of the things that were awakened in you. Like, hey, so when he died, I'm trying to honor, live this life. And I'm finding that I'm not really good with, you know what I mean? This whole realization that you're not okay. <laughs> it's okay. And for you to like really expose yourself was it. And I just literally now, I love talking about them. Love it. Hmm. Like it's been 10 years. I think right around the eight or nine year mark, I was like, I'm, I feel really good. You know what I mean? Like there was always still that, oh, nope, not done. 
and I'm not, you're not ever done, right? Like if, if you were an addict or, or you had rolled ankles or you have, we're not ever done healing. We're constantly, constantly doing these things. Um, but that's literally why the community, the belief that there is something greater than you inside that's guiding those feelings and that those feelings are not something that's wrong with you, which is what society wants to tell you. Oh, what's wrong with you? Oh, depressed and anxious, manic. Oh, schizophrenic. How do we know that schizophrenic isn't, isn't a gift? We're always like, oh, you're hearing voices. Mm-hmm. Are you here? Are you so elevated that you're accessing levels of brain that we're supposed? Why don't we start to spin it and look and be like, are they crazy? Or are they just accessing stuff that we're blocked off with? Right. But we call them this diagnosis, like maybe a schizophrenic or an autistic or a, do you know what I mean? I don't, I don't know. Or Down syndrome. Like we always like label, like there's still these magnificent things with those. <laughs> Damn. We could get in, you know, you know, yeah, like we could really get in and see the levels that we can fire on, but but because they don't fit with what our status in society suggests is normal, right, or or is uh, appropriate, something's wrong with you. Something something is something might just be so right though. I don't know, and so that's that's my uh why 2020 was my greatest year and i've reached out to other people uh johnny juicer johnny morelli he lost his mom but he's just like hands down i've connected with people i think the connection connection was one of the biggest things of why people agreed it was one of their best years if not the best connection with a lot of people globally i mean we're connecting globally using social media for what it's designed for like the good of what it was designed for right um connecting with people globally like minds uh, especially when we feel like we're not a part of this earth right now, like with, <laughs> with how we believe certain things, like, I just don't feel like I'm a part of earth. Um, <laughs> I can totally relate. <laughs> right. And that, that's that. And then, um, the authenticity of the human that, that is springing forward. And that's one of those things, like people are like, you know what, I'm not afraid to speak my mind because now they know what's at stake. And they feel amazing because now they're able to express their best self or their true self all of a sudden. And I think that is one of the most human, basic human rights is to express your authenticity, which is one thing I even dialed it up this year. And everyone's like, you? And I'm like, yeah, I held back a little because I was trying to sell books or I didn't want to lose that person or I was coached by an agent or, you know what I mean? And I'm like, I never felt right. And there was an, there was a logic behind it and there was a, a reason behind it, but I'm like, you know what now with what's at stake and the sets of urgency I have, that's why when you watch my videos and you've seen, like, I, I don't hold back. Like this may be four or eight minutes, but this is everything I got because what's at stake is everything this isn't. And that's not human. And that's what's at stake. And that's, what's attacking. So that's where that the connection, the authenticity is springing forward. And that's why I think there's this great awakening this year with this huge trauma. I call it the bad idea that they came up with being this pandemic. You call it the what? Sorry, you went kind of funny there. The The bad bad idea, because it's, it's, it's like an idea. Like, is it really like, have you proved there's a virus? No, is there's tests that not. So it's really just an idea. Well, it's a bad idea on your part, but it's going to be the greatest moment in the history of humanity was your bad idea. And you didn't know we had this in us. Like what the powers that be didn't know that we were capable of connecting and ascending and adapting and evolving the way we have. They, They thought they had us numb to rights, you know, but we're changing. We're changing. And that's why we see some of the most horrific expressions of control is because they don't like that we're waking up. No, their they don't like desperation that. is showing and it's yeah. alarming. Sometimes I don't even know how much more I can take, but it I is know. beautiful in that the connections that you make now, they're instantly authentic and they're deeper than ever before because you've kind of already filtered through the bullshit because you yeah. know where you stand on some really major issues. So you can get right. down to some really deep conversations immediately. And all these amazing minds are coming together, which is so powerful. So I know together there's gonna be some amazing solutions out there for going forward with humanity. So that that's exciting. That's and me too. I've been asking, like when I'm just lying there and asking, I'm just like, okay, how can I best serve? How can I best serve myself, my family yeah. and the world? Like, what yeah. am I truly here for? So, and I really feel it for me, it's also, it's helping people advocate for our children and future generations. Cause yeah. 
it's it, it, we we need to we 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 just need to i just like my son he'll be turning 12 next month actually there it is we'll see if it's the best year of his life see, just let him link it yeah that. see <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what it was it was like you had this like well we had this freedom that we could ride our bikes through the town and you almost felt like you were kind of on your own you had your friends you had a little bit of of a draw towards maybe a sport and you were, you were starting to do stuff in school and you were kind of, and you didn't really know any of the, like the deeper sinister stuff behind. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I mean? Like everything was very innocent and pure and simple. Right. And I think that was the biggest thing um, that I, that I took with that was, was wow. It, like almost like a little adult. And I've always come back to that. Like, I wonder if I could keep this, and I could have, but I was supposed to go to college because you're supposed to go to college. Right. And I was supposed to get a job. And I was like, it never felt right. And now I'm like, wait, why can't I just live like that? Oh my God, I can. <laughs> and, then, and then when I do it and there's people that are like, I really respect the way you live. What do you mean? It's just so simplified and childlike. But then I've done in projects and people were like, oh God, I don't know about TJ in a project. It's like a 12 year old and an adult project. Like, we don't know if we can bring this guy in. But then when they see that I can go, oh, wait, you're like lasered in focus and get, get stuff done. Well, yeah, like, <laughs> like a 12 year old heart and spirit with these adult, like, you know, there's times to, to lay on the ground and, and play with a cat. And then there's times to get some stuff done and let's go. But there's that balance and that knowing. And that's kind of where I try. That's my, my struggle is the constant. I'll know when I'm like way adulting way too much. And I'm like, ah, right. oh, oh, and I'll like <laughs> feel like I'm like, I'm like, like need a shower. Yeah. Like, oh, oh my gosh, this is too much. No, I'm sorry. I'm out. And they're like, where are you going? Like, I'm going to be a kid. What are you going to do? Uh, walk barefoot in something or, or play a game or, or, watch a movie from the eighties or enjoy a meal or connect with some people lay on the ground and talk about dreams and, and spirits and aliens. Like, awesome. wait, what are you talking about? Yeah. And, and everyone's just like, I can't believe, Oh, a phrase. I want to see a phrase we can no longer use. I came up yesterday because we had a long discussion at the village in San Diego. There was like eight of us and everybody was prefacing what they were about to say with, this is going to sound weird, but, and I'm like, no, no, that no longer makes any sense. Right. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is no more of that. So you just say it like it, yeah. you could say anything. You could say you had an, a conversation with an alien. That would make sense right now. Okay. There is no there is no part of weird. Everything is exposed. It's OK. Here we go. And they're like, yeah, you're right. And I mean, the topics and everyone, nobody was judging anybody and everyone was just riffing and going. And it was like wow this is this i feel was how society was supposed to be you know like in the more enlightened stages of of history i think this was what it was like in taverns and and you know in circles and teepees and and you know under a lit sky and, and stuff like that i think these were so that that's the stuff i've never i haven't had these conversations and these little these little groups are popping up by the millions yeah you know what i mean it's right. happening it's happening yeah, I know. And that's because yeah, everybody's so self-censoring and the PC culture is like gagged everyone, right? They're just no. worried about what they're going to think. They're going to say the right thing. They're going to offend. It's like, my it's not my job to not offend you. It's your no. job to just take offense or not. And, <laughs> and you do, I didn't mean to harm you. And Right. Right, yeah. Oh. That's all. So is your your nonprofit up and running now? Can people no, learn I'm about sorry. it or uh, not yet? I'm sorry. So we are going live on January 30th. Okay. January 30th is a Saturday. And we are Alex Zek, Ali Zek, Dr. Joe Yi, and myself are going to host three lives a piece. So we'll have like three different guests for 20 minutes a pop. And it'll go to each, we'll just like join each channel. But we're talking about what health freedom means, what medical freedom means, what you're doing, how you, how you came into this role like really just getting raw and real and open to expose the members that we've got. Um, and then from that, we'll have like our, our social media channel will be up. The website will be up. Um, something that we're doing to tease for the next two weeks is the first podcast is coming out this Friday. And that's how Dr. Tom. Find, how do people find out about it? So it's going to be the health, health freedom for humanity podcast. 
Okay. And it'll, it'll be on all the platforms, Spotify, iTunes, Apple, Google play, all that stuff. And the first guest is none other than Dr. Tom Cowan. Oh, yay. Love him. So I've bugged him. I've emailed him so many times. He's not responding to me. We're coming out <laughs> of the gate strong. <laughs> I got to get Oh, back. and by the way, he, there's a side to him that he expressed in this one because the three of us, we call ourselves the three, or somebody called us the three amigos and it's stuck. But we, we have this like, because Tom can drop scientific experiential bombs. Like he's yeah. just like bomb, bomb, bomb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was a side to him that was very open and playful and it gets the last 15 minutes is one of the best 15 minutes of a podcast i've ever i've ever heard of so awesome. i just want to tease everybody with that okay right yeah. well i'm yeah. gonna get this out so people can see that in time okay awesome and so okay so this is one of your solutions you are totally upping your your purpose and your authenticity and so what do you suggest for because we're in a shit storm right now right yes. and some people like during the headlines yes. some people believe I don't know how, but a lot yeah. of people actually believe the narrative. And right. then there's other people are just like, what can I do? Some people are rallying some, but what are some real effective things that you can see to really move towards where we want to go? Sure. So something that's scaring me, and this was like months ago and my Ted Koontz and I uh, addressed it and he, he addressed it. Great. I mean, he, he actually went a little stronger than me. There's people that were like, yo, TJ enough posting. Will you guys hold a rally already so we can end this? Mm. Wait, no there is no rally that will ever end this right there is no politician that's ever going to end this there is no single event or person that's going to do this for you this is going to be and ted goes we have to we have to grow up i don't know if you remember that part he's like we got to grow up and have responsibility and that's that's the toughest part we have to take this new level of responsibility for ourselves I had Oli Olerton on my podcast and my Instagram live. He's a former special forces uh, of the SAS uh, in, in the UK. He said, we had a rule TJ in combat one meter squared. You drew one meter squared around yourself. And when you were in the shit, you focused only on one meter squared, meaning you took care of yourself and everything within yourself right then and there, you took care of everything you could to make yourself unkillable. And in that, in you doing that, if our whole battalion does that, we become a unit and then we can go execute. Just like in, and it, and it was, he said, just like in an airplane, when you're dive bombing, you put your mask on first before helping others. You have to take care of yourself. That is your responsibility and duty as a human to the globe. So everyone's just like, whether you believe in the narrative, not believe in there, I don't, I'm probably not speaking to the people that believe in the narrative, but yeah, the people who are like, Hey, what can I do? Take that inventory of those eight, try to find some way that you can improve yourself in some capacity. And it doesn't have to be this huge leap, this big hail Mary, you got to solve it all today. Don't worry about that. Just improve in some way. And by you doing that, you ascend in a slight manner and your energy and your on the ether and everything else, you will elevate the globe. That's, and Sarah G put it, the greatest protest is to live the healthiest version of yourself. That's it. So right now we can all protest right now. The greatest protest right now is us living for literally our bodily sovereignty. You're not living for your husband. You're not living for your wife. You're not living for your kids. You're not living you have to take care of self so that you can be an example and then protect and go and do your thing. And so that's what I think is our, um, I'll get DMS. And, and when I've stated that, because I was just like, Nope, there is no protest. Stop it. Stop waiting for Trump. Stop waiting for Biden. Stop waiting for Canada. Stop waiting for stop. Take this onto yourself. And then once that happened, all of a sudden these DMS were like, Hey, I just want you to know, You've empowered me to stand in my voice. Mm. I, I, um, I didn't wear a mask in the airport and I felt this new level of accomplishment and, and, and power. And what it helped me is I could then go into my family's environment that would, they would normally bully me and I would get overwhelmed and would back down. Not that you're going to convince them on, because you're not going to win an info war. It's not about that. But this person could then stay within her family's vicinity and not let it affect her as it did before. Now, maybe 
there's an open conversation and a dialogue with one of the family members. Because as this thing gets strung out, there's going to be more people wanting to find out what we know. Because <laughs> they're going to be like, wait, you guys were right all along. Okay, hey, where, do you, where did you get this information from? And then all of a sudden now there's a lucid conversation said this fear-based, you know, uh, uh, dismantling and, and, and fabric, uh, uh, fragmenting of, of humanity. Um, but that was the biggest thing is I got more people saying, thank you so much. You've empowered me. I feel so much better in my skin. I feel like I've got my son and I have convers. I mean, there still are the difficult ones for sure, but there's more of this accountability and responsibility by people taking it on for themselves. And it might even just be something as simple as, I made one meal from scratch this week mm. to the, to the person that eats out eight times a week. That's a huge deal. There you go. You just changed everything. I woke up 10 minutes earlier to stare at the sun for 10 minutes and it was amazing. And I felt like this little girl, I know. <laughs> isn't it so great. And then it's like addictive and you're like, Oh my God, this is like a drug. I know. I think this is drugs. Like I really think this is supposed to be it. So again, what can we do to take action? That right there, put your, make yourself more resilient, adaptive, connected, evolved, healthy, really tough to, tough to eliminate, tough to kill. <laughs> you, like basically it, that's it. Like make it really hard for you to be overcome. And then don't stop connecting. It's all within those eight. Connect, 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 connect. Because we are our own news now. We are our own. They don't like when we connect. That's why they socially distance us and not right. physically distance right. us. Right. I know. Right. Isn't that an interesting term? Yeah. The, the words right there. Yeah. So keep connecting. However you got to do it. You're not alone. We're all out there. Nobody's going to save you in this connection, but you have these like minds all doing massive work themselves. And we'll give you feedback of, hey, what work did you do? What did you do today to help better yourself? Oh, I... uh I got the um, bushwhacked book on how to survive in the wild. Hey, cool. Or how to turn your property into self-sustaining, you know, uh, how to collect rainwater, how to farm, how to get chickens, how to do solar panels, how to, how to convert cash to gold and silver, how to, how to not use Google and why you might not want to and what switch search engine. And I mean, there's this whole new way of life that we're just getting reacquainted to survival again. And we're all doing it and helping. And it's just a really cool, like I thought about protesting and I've got this spirit inside that just wants to kind of fight and antagonize people. <laughs> and I thought I'm about it. Right I, now. That's where I'm at. So I, I so literally, Sasha, I was literally going to go stand on the road with a sign and I was just going to do what I would normally do on a weekend, which is like eat donuts, sit in the sun, walk the beach, do whatever, read a book. And I was like, you know what? Donuts, like actual donuts. So I love donuts. And and I, I've said this thing. <laughs> I I've saw said, the title of video, but I didn't think, I assumed it wasn't really donuts. It was, no, I was munching on, dude, come on. <laughs> so I literally, I've, I've said this because I, with, with my experience and my, my uh, observations clinically and with self, I said something in an interview for Weston A. Price Weston A. Price Foundation and yeah. Hilda like freaked out. And I was like, she's like, that's gold. And I'm like, it actually is. And I said, a happy donut is healthier than a sad salad. Oh, and yeah. I, I, I started to look around and the people on these like regiment diets, they don't, they're not healthy. They're healthy according to, so you got to understand that whenever you read the word a uh, perfectly healthy person dies of heart attack. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? And I'm like, wait, what does, that, moron. Yeah. what does that mean? Perfectly yeah. healthy. And I was like, okay, their vitals are good. According to the allopathic model, they didn't die. You know, they're all, and I'm like, but they haven't had a solid bowel movement in three years. They, they're not in love with their spouse and they're maybe having an affair and they feel guilty about it. They haven't slept. They don't believe in anything greater. Their nourishment is garbage. They move just to move because they know it's important for them, but they don't enjoy it. There's this whole, uh, they make a lot of money and the stress to keep it. They have three homes. They don't really have a relationship with their kids. It's like that person's perfectly healthy. Right. Well, according to their tests, person dies of a stroke. And it's like, wait, what are you talking about? So I started to look at all these people that had these, these things. And I'm like, it's not the food. 
because every one of those elderly people over 90, they all drank. They never talked about a diet. Some of them smoked. And I was like, what are you? But they enjoy their stuff. And I said, some people are like, is alcohol bad? And I'm like, that's like saying is a donut bad? I can't say that. Why are you eating it? Because you're lonely, miserable, you know, overeducated, overstimulated, like whatever. It is. <laughs> or because you're celebrating the fact that a donut tastes freaking awesome. And life is the shit. And I'm going to celebrate. I'm going to put a video staring at the sun, munching on donuts on a Sunday morning. Hell yeah. And so I've had those people who are like, no, I have this, I have that. And they live well into, or the person that smokes, they always smoke in celebration or they drink in celebration of their life. They don't drink to drown out that their life is, you know what I mean? And so I started to look, wow, the emotions and intention behind it are way stronger than the actual ingredient. Hence, on the most extreme stage, people can uh, transmute strychnine, like they can drink strychnine. And because of their beliefs, they're able to digest strychnine? Oh my gosh, the power of the system. So I did a podcast on like uh, mold, gluten, and germs, how to live with them. Because if we put our bodies in this place where you might not notice that gluten doesn't trigger your whole system into go to mayhem or mold in the atmosphere, like that was just something that tipped the scales. But if you do the work to put your body in a position, maybe you're not even aware. Maybe you just like consume mold and your body dealt with it in this really great way. And you weren't even aware of it or, or glute, we want to demonize gluten or demonize fat or demonize sugar. And it's like, wait, if those things are setting you off, there's something else going on here because that might not be the problem. Right. And so I, I am a big advocate of, and so you're asked like, are those donuts? Now here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. <clears throat> Cause the people go, well, that's not true. If that was true, I'd eat donuts every day. No, you wouldn't go for it though. Do it because you're an adult. You're a free human being and you can actually do that. And your body's going to tell you what it thinks it should do. Mm. So eat donuts every day. Do you feel amazing? Right. If you do keep doing it. <laughs> if you have feedback, like ah, I kind of got a stomach ache and I feel a little okay. So now I'm not going to say don't eat donuts, but I'll say this to people. Uh, I've had some clients who were like, TJ, uh, I eat chocolate cake at night. I crave chocolate cake at night. Okay. I know I probably shouldn't do it. No, no, no. Let's go there. Let's do it. Let's do it really well though. Where do you get your chocolate cake from? Vons. Okay. So the chocolate cake that has like 50 ingredients in it, right? <laughs> none, none of which your body recognized. So it's not really food. So it's not chocolate cake you're consuming. It's just this chemical shitstorm. Okay. So let's go with a chocolate cake that you make meaning you're going to connect with the ingredients. You're going to buy them. You're going to source them, buy them. You're going to measure them out. You're going to connect with that meal. The energy you're putting into that meal, you're going to connect with that thing rising. You've done something. You're putting the icing on. It's like a five, six ingredient, and they taste phenomenal cake. Now you cut a piece. Your normal size piece for the 50 ingredient chemical shitstorm was like huge. So you cut the same piece. Then you find out your body shut down your hunger because it got food. And it now has a feedback from your stomach to your brain that goes, yo, 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 we're good. Stop being hungry. And your brain goes, boop. And then all of a sudden you're a third way through the piece you would have normally crushed. Now you're like, oh my gosh, I feel pretty good. And you put that away. And then you go the next night. And now all of a sudden your body's getting nutrients from a source that we just put into an organized state that looks like chocolate cake but if you do it another way uh i was joking if you took like uh blueberry muffins and you took the same ingredients and just put them in a different manner you got scrambled eggs toast with butter blueberries and honey <laughs> Like, hey, but nobody would say anything to that. But a blueberry muffin, oh my God. And it's like, no, wait a second. Let's go down to the ingredients. Well, now all of a sudden that person now doesn't feel guilty, which is the biggest thing. They don't feel guilty for these cravings that their body definitely has a design. It's doing it for a reason. Don't, don't trick it. Don't make it feel guilty. Don't punish it with exercise or some strict diet. Give it to it. Why would it be wanting cocoa and butter? 
and flour from a source and avocado maybe if you do the icing or a heavy cream from a local farm or something. Why would it want that? Now all of a sudden it shifts to a vanilla version or it shifts to something else or it shifts to some other craving and all of a sudden you don't crave it anymore and that craving shifted over months to something else during the day. But instead of that person thinking that there's a good food or a bad food and going through this life of, my God, I, I'm such a bad person because I love Doritos or I love, you know, don't like, I'm like, no, okay, go with the Doritos. Now, you know that Doritos, you probably don't feel good. If you really truly connected with it, you took that inventory. Can you make Doritos from scratch? Yes, you can. And it's, it's a really great thing. And you get the tortillas that are raw and they're literally like an ingredient it's like one ingredient sprouted organic corn yeah. great and then you season them using the nourishing traditions cookbook or whatever like what is a, a cool ranch dorito what does it have and you start to have the onion salt and the stuff and you season them and you baked them and you oiled them with like lard or coconut or whatever healthy fat that you choose to use for you that you believe in and now you're eating a chip that is a dorito that you made oh my god I can have Doritos. Yes, you can. <laughs> and that's why, yeah. what did I make? I made the other night. And this is where the 12 year old comes in. I made a, I made a triple decker or a quadruple decker uh, peanut butter or almond butter, butter and raw honey broiled sourdough sandwich with fried plantains and bacon fat, which was basically like chips. And then I think I had like an avocado and, and some kombucha. And it was like my 12 year old meal only I made it from scratch in this. And I felt fantastic out. I think I had a banana because you got to have banana like with that peanut butter, you know? And I was like, <laughs> it, I, felt, I felt joyous. I felt amazing. I felt nourished. And everyone's just like, are you freaking kidding me with what you eat? And I'm like, but why is that bad? You know, it's raw honey, it's good butter. It's a broiled sourdough. I wish I could make my sourdough. I haven't. Oh, made it I've yet. been making my sourdough. It's a skill I learned because of this whole shitstorm. Because I love making stuff, so that's what I do. So you gotta, you gotta hook me up then. Maybe a recipe and and well, actually, I know the recipe, but total process from beginning to end. How long? So I take the starter out of the fridge the night before and feed it overnight. Make my dough the next day. Bake on the third day. Three days total. Three days, like, but it's like the first days you just feed sure. the starter. Yeah. And the starter you got from where? I got, well, I got from a friend. You can make okay. your own, but I just have, I mean, you always have anybody who's making sourdough always has extra starter. They have starter. So that's why I think I knew how to do it. That's where it like intimidated me. It was like, ah, it's just not an ingredient that's just easy to come by. And that was really it. it um, it's easy to come by. And I, like so it? today before I came here, I had my homemade sourdough with my homemade mayo, my homemade sauerkraut because I make 100 pounds of sauerkraut every year with an organic chicken from a local farmer and you know and I just love it I so I know Fantastic. what you mean like I love it I sit there and I love it right my food. it's so we're supposed to we're supposed to like really celebrate flavors and and want to share them and like yeah. share them like oh my god and everyone's just like you like what you just said turn me on like that people will literally be like your way of eating is so approachable and it just looks so easy it really is when, when you, you respect it and it's that part of your life. Like the highlight of my night is coming home so I can make dinner. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm going to make dinner tonight and I'm going to get very excited about it. Cause I already am knowing, I mean, us talking about this right now is helping, <laughs> um, but I, I know where I'm going and it's, it's yeah. There's, it there's is. And now these me. days when you have friends over that are a meaningful conversation and you have this <laughs> amazing meal with you and you, right? like it brings me to tears when I'm right. sitting there. Yeah, it does. It means so much more now than ever before. Humanity. Oh. Like this is a huge, this is human. This is what it is to be it. And this is, this is happening and we're getting reacquainted with this. We forgot what it was like. It's okay. It's coming back. We it's have, and it's, it's hard. It's hard. I, that's what's really hurting my heart is the lack of humanity in so many people because they're just so, so just stop, just turn off the news and just feel it. Like you were saying, feel it. Does it feel right? right? right. You're, you're such in this fear state that you can't even tap into your own inner guidance system that will tell you right. if we're on the right path or not, or if there's something really to fear or not, or if the measures you're being told to do make any sense, but nobody's right. feeling it. And it's just, and the humanity is 
I mean, a friend, of my, my, my husband just helped create a, build an outdoor rink in our little park down the street. And a woman called by law because we're not supposed to be playing hockey outside. Yeah. And another woman in the neighborhood went up to this woman to ask her, her name and she tells her, eat shit. This is what oh, she said wow. to her. It's like the humanity. It's like, do you remember what it was like to live a year ago? I wonder. You know? like so, what she's going but through. there's amazing things happening and that's what we got to focus on. And I know it's, I feel like the desperation is getting so ugly that everything needs to be revealed before I agree. all this beauty can really- We need to know like what is there so that we know how to like respond. We have to be aware of it. And now we're aware of some really gnarly stuff. Yeah. Okay, we've got it. We've got it. We got it. Yeah, I hope so. We got it. Okay, well, you got to go make dinner and we've been talking for a long time. So <laughs> this is awesome. I think we pretty much, you actually touched on because I was going to actually bring up your brother. So I, I'm glad you did because you had mentioned that is another highlight of your life in a way. And I think that's the way that people really overcome their, their challenges is by, yeah. it's an opportunity, right? Totally. It's an opportunity to elevate. So awesome. That's well, it. you are super inspiring. Thank you so much. Well, I mean, you. your, your, your zest for life is, it's, it's not as common as I, it was, it would mm. like it to be. So I really appreciate that. And it's <laughs> infectious. It really is. So I hope everybody watching this or listening to this that you know you've inspired to go find your purpose to go taste your food to go make your food to yeah. to just connect that's it i love it so I love it. okay so how can people find you what what are the main ways um so i'm redoing my website uh but just go to drtommyjohn.com drtommyjohn.com and as of right now all my social media is on there um instagram i'm real active with and if you dm me i will get back to you uh um Okay. So if you've got questions or whatever, I'm on Telegram. I'll, oh, I'll, okay. I am on Telegram and that's kind of getting popular. Um, I'll actually tell you that address now because it's okay. not. Um, Telegram's kind of tricky, right? Like it's. It's, it's easy to get lost. It's weird. Yeah. I know. Um, so it's, it's uh, forward. Okay. <laughs> it's. <t> <laughs> We're like, it's hard. Here, ready? It's two forward slashes. Okay. T dot me. T dot me. Forward slash. Forward slash. Capital D. Okay. Little R. Mm -hmm. Capital T. Mm -hmm. Capital J. Mm -hmm. Little O, little H, little N. So okay. Dr. T. John. T. John. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I will find you on there and I will share that. Awesome. And that's it. And then look out for the, the, uh, nonprofit. Yeah, so the that, nonprofit sounds amazing. For sure. that sounds, and this is why like a group of us have an idea around the sovereign collective. Like that's what the podcast is, but it's about you're a sovereign, but you do it as a collective. You don't have to do it on your own. Right. We totally change. We barter, we have skills, we, you know, so oh, yeah. amazing. Love, love, love what you're doing. It's happening. Yeah. Thank you so much. I super I appreciate you. your time. This is course. Been this is fun. Thank you. Thank you for being awesome. Where are you, by the way? Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Ah, oh my god. It's cold and dark right now, actually. So and I'm hearing a lot of stuff going on in Quebec and, oh, and everything else there. Yeah. So, they just instituted 8 p.m. curfew. It's, that's what uh, I heard. Six thousand to the to the what really helped gave me hope is I was at a rally yesterday and I had an nice. amazing conversation with the police officer. And he was there, there, there every week for these rallies. And he's like, it's the best part of my day. It's like, oh, nice. He's like, Good. He, enjoyed it. he was talking. He was like, he goes, after these days, I don't want to go home and drink a case of beer because I've had such a great day. And it was so nice to, I'm like, are you going to, you can, you know, you're going to have to choose something here soon. <laughs> At some point. Not willing to put out his personal opinion, but it was, he was aware and he got, gets it because not all of them are, but it's good. To I love it. That. So anyways. Okay, I won't keep you any longer. Really Amazing. appreciate your time. Of course, thank and you. Maybe we can do this again. And I look forward to all the things that you have coming Definitely. out. Definitely. Thank you so much. Thank you.